Australia often is referred to as the lucky country. But this is a quote that refers to our incredible bounty of mineral and agricultural wealth, wealth that we tend to take for granted. Australia is a lucky country, but mainly for some specific natural assets that we often overlook. Our abundant sunlight and the huge expanse of surrounding water. With the increasingly serious problems of global warming and looming energy shortages, Australians are very fortunate to be able to bask in these limitless resources. Already, Australia is a world leader in solar energy technologies. If we can capitalize on our natural assets, we can join the ranks of the world's leading clean energy exporters and become a leading supplier of environmentally friendly technologies that can utilize our natural resources. It's just a matter of how we go about it. Professor Janusz Nowotny is the director of the Center for Materials Research and Energy Conversion at Sydney's University of New South Wales. For the past six years, we've been working on revolutionary new ways to use the power of the sun to develop two environmentally friendly technologies. And these have the potential to have a substantial impact on the reduction of global warming and air pollution. The first technology aims to extract environmentally clean and virtually unlimited supplies of energy from water. The second technology will develop a new generation of environmentally friendly building materials that have two functions. The first function is the ability to self-clean dirt, bacteria, algae and fungi from a range of surfaces such as building materials, paving materials and so on. The second function is the ability to decompose air pollutants such as nitrogen oxides. The key to this work is titanium oxide. Using specially engineered titanium oxide ceramics that harvest sunlight and split water, we aim to produce hydrogen fuel that emits no greenhouse gases or pollutants either during the production of hydrogen or when it is burned as a fuel. When titanium oxide is deposited on building materials, it decomposes deposits, growths, and pollutant gases in the air. Self-cleaning building coatings are but the first stepping stone of a number of areas which flow on directly from this range of technologies. For instance, these coatings also decompose nitrogen oxides, which are air pollution gases that come from the exhaust pipes and from the burning of coal. And this titanium will actually is able to decompose NOx. Furthermore, these type of coatings have other applications. They're self-sterilizing, so they can be used on clothing, on hospital and sterile implements, so on and so forth. Many, many applications, all of which are ripe for commercialization. Brickworks is really pleased to be able to participate in this project with the University of New South Wales. Um, it's one of the things that's very important to us as a business. We'll actually be able to develop building coatings based on this technology for all our building products, our bricks, pavers, tiles, wall facade systems. When our solar hydrogen technology is developed, we estimate that rooftop panels placed on 1.6 million homes could supply all of Australia's current energy needs. A rooftop panel and storage tanks for water and hydrogen would make our homes energy self-sufficient. But what exactly is solar hydrogen? Uh, the most important aspect of solar hydrogen is that it is generated from water, which is a renewable material, and from uh, using solar energy, which is renewable energy. This is our solar simulator. It simulates the sun so that we can do controlled experiments in the lab right here. The titanium dioxide, the photocatalyst we're producing, is positioned in here, in this electrode. When the light shines down onto it, it becomes reactive and starts to split the water. Oxygen is produced here, Hydrogen is produced at this electrode here. As you can see, it's working very effectively at the moment. Although hydrogen is recognized widely as the fuel of the future, it's been powering the sun and stars since the creation of the universe. On Earth, hydrogen is present and abundant in water, natural gas, petroleum, biomass, and other materials. But solar hydrogen was not considered seriously as a fuel technology until 1971, when two Japanese scientists discovered the solar hydrogen process. 
Professors Akira Fujishima and Kenichi Honda made the discovery that allowed the splitting of water into hydrogen and oxygen, and they're now working closely with our Faculty of Science Center. Since Fujishima's and Honda's discovery, researchers around the world have been striving to develop the technology to achieve one of the ultimate goals of science, the design of materials and devices that are necessary to split water using solar energy. Uh, in order to tackle uh, this technology and to be competitive, we established a unique international network on solar hydrogen, which brings together the best or the most uh, uh, important groups working in this area from Japan, from Europe, and from the United States. Australia has the world's largest reserves of titania, which is the source material for the photocatalyst for solar hydrogen production. But, and this is a big but, commercially available titania is not very efficient. And it's this situation that's driving the worldwide research in a race to increase its efficiency. The science we undertake is to engineer the semiconducting properties of titania by manipulating its chemical and electronic structures. In order to do this, it's critical to be able to measure the chemical activity of the electrons of titania at the surface of the photocatalyst. What sets our laboratory apart is the analytical equipment that Professor Novotny designed and manufactured. This equipment allows us to measure both the bulk properties and the surface properties of the materials that we're engineering, but we do that while they're being processed. And this is a critical component of the ability to understand what is happening while we make the material and how it will perform when it's in use. This equipment is unique and it lets us understand the science at a rate that's unmatched anywhere else in the world. Oh yeah, wonderful stuff comes out of this one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Terrific. Okay. Okay. Well, with this technology that is under development at the University of New South Wales, there are many other applications that are spin-offs or ancillaries, and these applications have numerous areas in which they can be applied, such as environmental remediation, air pollution, water purification, sterilization issues, and so on. And all of these applications are environmentally friendly and sustainable, but they're also of economic significance to our present and our future industrial partners.